Hi, Roy here from Roy Reads Anything, a channel about eclectic reading and just going to launch the special festive version of the sign. Okay, so just while you recover from that, I'll tell you, I'm going to talk about three books that I've read in the last week, so it's kind of a recent reads kind of thing. And if I get this out on Friday, it would be a Friday Reads kind of thing. So I'm going to talk about a Dickens book, a ghost story, and a sword and sorcery novel. Okay, so the Dickens book, The Haunted House, Charles Dickens. So what with Dickens being like so closely associated with Christmas, and also the author of one of the world's most famous ghost stories, A Christmas Carol, and at least one other classic ghost story, The Signalman. The idea of this, The Haunted House, which was a Christmas-related book, I thought was very intriguing and was surprised. Why Why do people not talk about this as being, being a famous piece of Dickens? Okay, let's find out. So, The Haunted House was originally an issue of all the year round Charles Dickens edited a magazine which came out every week and then there would be a Christmas issue as well, an extra Christmas issue and that was quite a big deal. Uh, so, here's one from a bit later. So, it was bigger than the normal issues and sometimes it would be like this one, you'd get a whole novella in the, in the magazine um, or other times it would be a collection of short stories so it's the the long-awaited Christmas issue uh, one one difference from the normal issues is you get this wraparound color cover which has adverts so normally the magazine didn't have any advertising it would just be plain pages like this but um, here you've got adverts fries cocoa that still going when I was a kid. Um, rather promising looking hair tonic, um, some galvanic, electro galvanic health devices with batteries, so world of wonders just in the adverts. Anyway, yes, Christmas issue, so probably quite an important thing for Dickens in a sort of business sense. What he thought he'd do this year in a sort of Nick Fury style, was assemble a team of top flight writers to do a collective, a collective set of stories joined together with, with framing stories written by him. So that still sounds pretty promising. It's a Christmas issue, it's collective writers. And some I hadn't heard of, but uh, Wilkie Collins, well-known sensation novelist, Elizabeth Gaskell, you know, so this, this is sort of a sort of a top team. So here's what you get. Introductory story. Uh, there's a guy on a train. There's some impenetrable humour stuff basically taking the piss out of spiritualists, which he refers to as rappers, slightly confusingly. Um, so once that's out of the way, it's about this guy finding this house and moving into it and it's like a haunted house there's weird noises the servants are freaking out and it's this sort of um, classic old haunted house although he himself is skeptical about it he kind of blames the servants he thinks the servants are hysterical so the plan is to get rid of the servants and get a bunch of his friends together to move in, to live in the house for, I think, three months. Uh, they live in the house. They've all got their own rooms. They all do, they, they do the chores together. It's all a bit of a lark. And they vow not to tell anything that happens apart from a dire emergency. So the stories of hauntings, if there are any, they're going to tell each other on Twelfth Night around, around a big feast. So that's the thing, this group of people, they, they take over the house, they're going to live in the haunted rooms and they're going to uh, tell each other stories about what happens. Still sounds pretty promising. So then you get the stories. Now, they're not 
usually ghost stories in the sense we would think of them they're not really they're not scary they're more they're sort of sometimes it's haunting in a psychological sense of the person in the room this is something that's sort of affecting them apparently that's what dickens wanted he wanted these great writers to tell stories about something that really um haunted them really affected them uh, and he was allegedly disappointed with what they what they came up with so maybe that's not very promising for the book they don't put that on the blurb um so what do you get you get a rather nice um somebody called hesba stretton writes a rather nice romance story with a bit of a bit of a gothic air to it uh george augustus sala his is a uh, a comedy piece um humor runs through this book although i'd say it's a it's a bit like being at a it's a bit like being at a banquet or a dinner and you'll you'll you think you ought to be laughing along even though you don't always quite understand what it is they're on about and sometimes you think you ought to be laughing and it's actually something where you you ought to be crying uh, so there's another piece, The Ghost in the Picture Room, is a sentimental religious poem. So if nothing else, this is varied. Wilkie Collins, you know, promising idea. Wilkie Collins writes a sort of adventure sea story, fine in its way. You get um, Dickens himself does one of the stories, as well as topping and tailing it with the, the framing bits. The Dickens story, The Ghost in Master B's Bedroom, if if I tell you it's about children playing a game where the boys and the girls, they, they create a harem or seraglio, then you can maybe see there's a bit of ickiness to that and you can maybe see why it's not top of the list for Christmas television adaptations of Charles Dickens. Um, and that ends very sadly. Then Elizabeth Gaskell comes in with the longest story. Really good. It's really well written. She's definitely the most valued player in this game. It's another weepy. It ends with no redemption. It's tragic and very sad. Uh, Dickens finishes it off. More of that baffling humour. Um, and... Uh, he basically tells us to enjoy Christmas and read the New Testament. So, The Haunted House by Dickens. Now I understand why it isn't famous and people don't automatically go to this once they've read A Christmas Carol. It's probably for Dickens completists only and kind of, um, you know, hardened Victorianists. So, read that. I also read Sticking with the Haunted Theme. I read a novella by Helen Dunmore called The Great Coat. So um, this was actually published by Hammer. Hammer had some sort of publishing venture in about 10 years ago um, with, a, with a number of books. Uh, this is one of them. It's set in 1952 called The Great Coat. The reason I got it is that I actually possess an RAF Great Coat, which is the haunted or haunting object in the story i'll probably edit in a, a, a shot of that um so yeah there's a young married couple uh it's, it's mainly told uh re revolving around the the woman who's at home in this rather horrible rented rented flat finds this raf coat jammed at the back of a cupboard um, and uses it like an eider down to keep warm at night and then ghostly things ensue i'd say it's uh, again not 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 a terrifying story it's atmospheric the the stuff about early 50s britain is it's probably more disturbing than the supernatural elements really the poverty the class snobbery and the just trying to get by for things like food and warmth um, and the shadow of wartime hanging over it all uh, it's, it's, it's a short piece, 200 pages, in one of those stories where it sort of builds up, establishes what's there. Once you know what's going on, it's kind of, you know, it's not like 
senses shattering plot twists. Um, a lot of people gave it sort of three stars and then said, oh, I've came back and gave it an extra star because it stayed with me because of the writing and the imagery. So I enjoyed that, Helen Dunmore, The Great Coat. And another thing I read, as mentioned last week, was Conan, Blood of the Serpent by S.M. Sterling. So Conan, as in Conan the Barbarian, sword and sorcery hero created by Robert E. Howard in the 1930s. And this is the latest in a long, long line of, of sequels and pastiches. And there hasn't been one for a while, so it's kind of a publishing event. Um, and whatever I'm going to say about it, I found it entertaining. I would recommend it. If you're going to read Conan stories that aren't Howard, then this would be a good one to read. And um, yes, it was, um, you know, drives along, lots of action. Great. Um, obviously, it's not the original pulpy writing of Howard. It's, it's more... It's more modern. I mean, I don't mean that they've got like cell phones and stuff, but that the the writing is more like modern modern fantasy light kind of writing, I suppose. Uh, it's a prequel to a story called Red Nails by Howard, and in fact, about twenty percent of the book is a reprint of Red Nails with some cool illustrations. So you could see it as a nice edition of Red Nails with a long um, apocryphal prologue. So, how to describe it? Here's what I think. If you think of the Robbie, Robert E. Howard original Conan stories as being like a painting, a fantastic um, painting full of action and this supernatural creatures and it's you know it's vivid you can see the brush strokes from the original artist sort of um, the energy of that and it's almost as if they're communicating with you across across the uh, across the years because it's so powerful and it has a background the background looks intriguing and beautiful and it sort of fades away into into blurriness but that's fine it's kind of you know, that's part of its intriguingness. Okay, so if that's what the Howard stories are like, this novel is like a 4K, hyper-real, hyper-detailed photograph where you can see every detail. Stuff doesn't fo fade away into the background. You know, if, if warriors are riding horses, well... How many horses do they have? Do they have remounts? Do they have to carry supplies? You, you learn all that kind of stuff. Conan gets drunk in a tavern. Does that mean he has a hangover? If he has a hangover, what does he do to get rid of that hangover? What is Conan's morning routine like? It turns out he does all the things that we do in the morning, which we might not have needed to know in quite so much detail, but it's all there. You know, it's sort of... It reminded me, another another weird analogy, I suppose, it reminded me of uh, those exploded diagrams of, of like engines or aeroplanes where you see every single bit down to like a rivet flying through the air so you can just sort of see everything that's there. So you could say it's like world building, but none of that drags the story down. It bowls along. It's super powerful. Um, another thing about it, it's, um, it's rather Tarzan-like, being that it's set in a pseudo-African setting um, and that ensorcelled animals are key adversaries for Conan in kind of a gamified way you know every every he advances two miles but then like a has a rhinoceros coming after him that sort of thing happens um, the at that Africanness makes it feel a little bit Tarzan like in the way it's following following him as the protagonist pretty much every step of the way I think you think you got that quite a lot in Edgar Rice Burroughs. Um, you don't always get that in Howard's Conan stories. Sometimes you get as, as a way of making him seem like more sort of powerful and, and interesting. Sometimes he's not like centre stage. Um, in fact, Tarzan Link, there's a, um, 
a, a tribe of man apes called the Kerchaki. Not canopes. No, no, not no, not not canopes. Um, manopes. <laughs> a, a tribe of man apes. Um, they've got the same name as Tarzan's adoptive ape parent. Okay, so I, I think I'm digging myself into a, a level of detail now. Um, anyway, yes, so. Great novel, very different writing approach than the originals. Complements it quite well if you can if you can bear pastiches at all. Okay, what am I going to be reading now? Well, two things. Um, course related reading includes Sarah Waters tipping the bell bit, and reading just for the hell of it, perhaps literally a Dennis Wheatley novel to the devil, a daughter. So this will answer the black magic prompt of the Christmas Evil readathon. I assume it will is. It says it's a black magic story on the front. It's got the devil in it. And uh, there's some sort of um, a hideous thing he made in Essex is going to come into it as well. So, yeah, stuff I will read in the run up to Christmas. I think that's all I've got to say for now. So cheers everybody and I'll see you in a bit.